in reality, uh, there's a, the differences are actually fairly minor. Um, there is obviously a difference in the uh, shares that can be issued in that, of course, to comply with Sharia, um, you cannot have preference shares as such. And so a classic fund would issue ordinary shares and preference shares. In an Islamic fund, we would tend to issue management shares and partic sorry, participating shares to the investors. Um, but other than that, and of course the, the underlying assets then of course must be um, halal, so they must, so they will, the underlying assets will have been screened um, to make they, sure they are Sharia compliant. And any debt financing again within the structure again must of course be Sharia compliant. From a regulatory perspective, um, oh, from a Jersey regulatory perspective, which is I'm from Jersey, so that's the only jurisdiction I'm qualified to speak about, really. There is actually very, very little difference. Um, our regulated certainly has no additional regulations or, or lesser regulations for a Sharia-compliant fund. Um, from my day-to-day -day work perspective uh, with my team, um, the majority of our work, of course, revolves around the regulation or uh, the regulatory um, impact on a fund. But then over that, of course, we have the Sharia compliance or the Sharia compliant overlay. Um, and so there is a sort of a general ensuring that the assets are Sharia compliant and um, then preparing for the annual Sharia audit. I, I see Islamic funds as a form of ethical funds, and this is something I've discussed, in, in fact, um, earlier today with uh, one, of, one of the sort of uh, scholars who was here. Um, and we tend to agree that sort of um, there are obviously slight differences, but if you were to take um, most of the ethical fund managers would tend to say that an Islamic fund was a, was a, if you like, a compartment within ethical funds. In the last few years, I'd have to say, unfortunately, I've seen, we've seen very little growth, but I think that is as much to do with market sentiments as anything else. Um, similarly, I think my involvement, of course, goes back pre-Dow uh, Jones Islamic Index of 1999. And I think at that time, many of us expected a sort of a, a once Sharia, the sort of, if you like, the Sharia screening had been codified. Many of us seem to expect a, a huge number of new funds to be launched. Um, we simply haven't seen that, or those funds that have been launched haven't necessarily grown to the um, to reach their market potential, or they certainly have, or have um, just n not met up with their conventional counterparts. I can only really speak from my experience. And so now the funds we administer tend to be on behalf of uh, investment groups and banks from the GCC. And historically, most of their, their investors are derived from the GCC. Um, we have seen some expansion into of uh, GCC-based fund managers or banks trying to raise capital and sell into the Far East, Malaysia, of course, in particular. Um, but to date, with limited success. Um, I, I actually see very, very few barriers. Um, I think Islamic funds have now are a fairly mature, a fairly mature product. Um, the barriers are um, barriers are designing a product that actually would be of interest to investors. Um, I hearsay and sort of is that there is a problem of, of getting Sharia advisors. Again, that's not something we tend to see. Generally, the funds we work with and the partners we work with um, will have a will use the Sharia um, audit committee of a. Of, a, of the institute sponsoring institution, so that's not a problem. Possibly the product that um, the area I see the 
lack of um, development in is in the more on the retail side, um, which is definitely of some concern that there is uh, most of the products tend to be for the institutional or high net worth individuals. Um, we don't see, um, unfortunately, don't see many products for the retail market. And I think that is definitely a failing in the, with the industry as a whole. Taib tends to, is, there are many different translations. I think the translation that sort of I've, I've, I've used and um, will stick to for the moment is wholesome investment. It, uh, Sharia compliant investment um, has become, in some areas, and I stretch in some areas, Sharia compliant investment seems to become codified into what is haram and what is halal. And of course, we can only invest in what is halal. But the underlying basis of Sharia is, is, for, the, is for the greater glory, and we should be looking at more, perhaps we should be looking at more wholesome investment. We should be looking to go beyond straightforward it is halal, therefore we can invest in it. We perhaps should be looking at what is for the greater good of the community, as in accordance with the, the basic tenets of Sharia. We should be looking at, is this, it may be allowable, but is it actually a good investment, not just for me, but for the rest of the community? We've seen very, very few Islamic equity funds in the last few years. Um, if anything, in fact, the main, the uh, most of the funds that we've seen in the last few years have tended to actually be real estate funds. Um, the, uh, there's been, we've had many, many meetings with institutions looking to launch Islamic equity funds, or. Um, with not often with a particular bias to either a particular type of industry or a country-based fund, um, but very, very few of those go much further than sort of lengthy discussions. Um, it seems that real estate is the asset class that seems to have um, seems to dominate at the moment. Theoretically, and in you know, sort of, uh, uh, there is no limit. Um, there is there are a huge number of Muslims, obviously, in Europe, um, and if a fund is structured correctly and the risk reward ratios are the same, there should be no reason why an Islamic fund shouldn't be of interest to a conventional investor. Um, indeed some of the Sukuk structures we established for institutions in, uh, some years ago were purchased by conventional investors because the risk reward was as good as they could get it from a conventional vehicle. So, there, and on the basis of, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Islamic funds being effectively a form of um, ethical investment, um, and particularly if one were to add a layer of sort of Taib tripe or wholesome um, bias to, to that, um, th there is no limit. Um, I think communication is a big problem. There is a, a deep-rooted misunderstanding as to what Islamic finance is and the val validity of it. Um, uh, I believe that um, Islamic finance needs to focus on, more on the retail product for the average investor the, rather than necessarily the current market, which is very much for the high net worth or institutional investors. Um, the, there is, as we've mentioned earlier, a shortage of expertise within the industry. Um, but that, in, that expertise is growing, um, but it will take time. It, um, Rome was not built in a day, and Islamic finance will not, will not grow, exp cannot grow, unless there is a, a, st a, a, a flow of knowledge and a flow of manpower to make it work.